Roger Lairs, welcome to Oak Swamp and part 23 of the Austin 10 Special Wrap. Firstly this week, as usual, I'd like to welcome all the new subscribers. Welcome aboard, lads. Secondly, big thanks to everyone who left a comment and a like last week. Keep them coming, you know I love them. And thirdly this week, Tip Jar. Two people contributed this week, Gary Irwin and Shane Norman. Nice one, lads. Really appreciated. So if you also want to be part of this, you can go over to my homepage. There's a little tip jar icon there. Bang on that, and it'll take you to PayPal. And if you want to bung me a couple of quid to help me out here, it'd be greatly appreciated. Anyway, we better get on with it, haven't we? So I've got the axle back on the bench. I've got some nuts being made for these by Paul, so that's kind of cool. Now, I've checked all these... These track rod ends, and they are surprisingly good. I haven't took them off because there's no need, there's no play in them, and they're still full of grease. So I'm going to live with them for a bit. Okay, so I've tidied up the welds on here and generally made it look a little bit better. You might be wondering why I put slots and not just a hole in for the shock absorbers. Well obviously the length of the shock absorbers is different from the trailing length of the spring. But also, if you adjust the caster, which I imagine I'm going to be doing at times, it's going to alter the position as well. So I figured leaving a big nice long slot is going to be the fella. And basically it's only going to be going up and down anyway. So. That's pretty cool. You know what this is really missing though, don't you? So sober man inside me is screaming to get out. This dark and twisted drunken mind turns it out with grants and shouts. Notches on my bedpost, who've got less and less to play. And I know that's because I'm my permanently drunken mental state. Right, this is the dizzy that came with the car, and it looks like someone's chewed the advanced retard out of it, so that's not going to be very useful, is it? Open up the door and call out to the hallway on all fours. It's all in there, but not connected up. Doesn't appear to be any wear on it. Now, I did consider buying a, a new distributor. You can get a electronic one for about 60 quid, the cheapest chips. But, I like the idea of points. If it goes wrong, <laughs> well, you can change them and you can see what's wrong. So I'm going to stick with points and a condenser. And I think I'm going to rebuild this one up a bit because it's not in bad nick. All it needs is the advanced retard piece. So I'm going to give this a good clean up and uh, see what I can't do with this. Be careful, I don't want to make this look shiny, I just want to get all the crap off. A little bit of super grease on it, and just holds in there a bit. Probably, oh yeah. Ah, oh, that's lush. No wear in that dog, not that I thought there would be, but. And I'm going to tap the pin in just a little bit because I'm not finished with this just quite yet. That dizzy's alright from being a little bit of a stiff old git. Right, I'm just going to bang this back together. Right, that's a new Lucas cap on there, so I need the advanced retard for this, but apart from that, I think she's good. Right, I'm going to check out this oil pump. If you're going to race these engines, they suggest you're going to use a, an external pump off a of Fiesta or something, but I mean, for what I'm doing, I think this was going to be alright. I'm going to just open them up, look for wear. I was expecting that to come straight off, but... 
Oh, there's a bit mucky in there. They didn't change their oil enough, whoever had this engine. I'll we'll take E off. Oh, good, good, good. I do think this engine has done very little miles because nothing I found has had any wear on it. All the bearings were good, you know what I mean? They'd scarcely run in. I think it's probably done about 40 or 50,000. Not been serviced the last 20. It loves it. Mm, got a little bit of wear in the bottom here. Yeah. She sat there, look. And then this revolves around the outside. And goes like that. Cool design. I like it. One less thing to think about. A bit more grease on the hands. Now, I want to take this hub off because this one's running really tight. And it's a bit noisy. But I need a puller, so I'm going to go around and see Sean. Whoa! There he is. <laughs> oh, and we're underneath the Exo Booster. Now you might remember the Exo Booster from one of my videos. What are you up to here, Sean? I'm just about to try and start. You're going to start it. <laughs> Look at this. You can see how tidy my garage is now, can't you? Scruffy fuck. That's the leftover. Box. Ah, that's the rest of the gearbox. Is it? What was wrong with it? It was jumping out second, so needed. First and second dogs undercut. First gear had, had welded itself to the shaft. Oh, yeah, that's pretty nasty, isn't it? So that's that's a, that's an insert thing in there. Ah, oh, right. Let's see that. Oh, that's nasty, isn't it? That's where first gear sits, is it? Excellent. <laughs> if you're into this sort of thing, Sean's just started his channel off again, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it going after it's been sat idle for years. And what's that a, called? It's called uh, Where's My Thirteen Mill. I'll put a link in the description. You can pop over and see Sean because he's got some videos on this, and you're going to start some new stuff, yeah? Yeah, with sort of track days and and bits and bobs like that, really. And don't forget to go and look at the video if you haven't seen it of when me and Sean went out on this because mm -hmm. it is absolutely nuts. Anyway, I better walk home with said puller. So come on, baby. Let's see what this does. Do you it's going to come off? There she goes, that was easy. Let's see another butcher's at this. Tab washer, undo that, beat that round, get the bearing out. Let's get on there. Yeah, she's not clever, that bearing. There you go. Ew. Oof. Is that grease? Yeah, that's grease. Well, it was grease. It reminds me of earwax. <laughs> it's horrible. That grease come out all in one bit. Like. Ooh. Ooh, that's not very nice. Right, how do we get them out? Daylight on the subject. Interference fit. Right, looks like both of them are stuffed. This one feels better. But I'm going to open them up and have a look. I've got a feeling with these bearings, if I type in Austin 10, they can be really expensive. But if I go up the old bearing shop, then they might not be as expensive. So I'm in hands and I've just come up to pick my mate Jeff up. Oh yeah. And we're off to go and look at a chassis. Oh, here we go. 
Can we roll it out? Oh, it's got flat. Flat oh, I see flat. Yeah. Lift all this stuff up. I'm assuming the body de deteriorated and died of its own natural causes, does it? Yeah, I think it was lifted off years ago. Yeah. About 1971, apparently. Really? Mm. All right, so we've got a straight six overhead valve with the tiniest little carb I've ever seen on it. Oh, it's an SU on the piss. Yeah, it's, it's um real unusual one, that. That starting handle you've got fit in it. Probably. Because we could see if it's... Yeah, go and pull them out of the van. Right? Hang on. Has he gone in? Yeah. Oh, there you go. No compression. Has it not? No. <laughs> it's got the plugs in as well. Nothing. Nothing at all? No. Let's open a plug up and... Plug usually tells the story. It's an interesting looking engine though. They're about 1700, aren't they? It's going to want a complete strip now. Yeah, of course it is. A bit oily, but... These are major money to rebuild, these are. Well, I'll, I'll speed 20 or 17 grand. And that's if you can get the bit. 17 grand to rebuild it was. Was it? Mm. You're really talking me into it for a man who's <laughs> got no fucking budget at all. <laughs> There's yeah. no rings available for these, is there? I oh, can get rings and everything like that. Yeah. You can? Yeah, yeah. Basically, all you want is a motor. It's seeming quite bleak, that motor is. <laughs> and from what you've told me... Well, I'm just telling you the truth. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate yeah. the truth. <laughs> oh, fuck me, there's none. Is it actually attached to anything? <laughs> if it had compression, we'd have wheeled it out by now and we'd be talking money, but... Yeah. What you've got to look at is why was this dragged into the garage in the first place? Where's the body gone? The body obviously rushed it away. But why did they take it off the road in the first place? Because it broke down. Yeah. Well, there you go. That was a beautiful engine, but after good advice from the fella who's selling it, I'm not buying it. Ah, shame, but thanks for letting me have a look. No, that's okay. Yeah. Nice to meet you. We'll see you I'll again. See you again. What think of that then, Jeff. Yeah, it was a nice old thing, but it's, um, it wants a lot of money chucking at it. If you really wanted one of those things, you know, it's not a brilliant project to buy because you know you're going to spend seven grand on the engine to start with. It's right out of my league. Right, next stop, Solent Bearings. Good Hello, mate. Sir, you right? Yeah. You? I've got these two, right? They're quite old and probably Imperial, where well, they are Imperial, but yeah, I yeah. measured them and I don't know if you could get anything similar. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, we should have those here, I'd say. You'll be on YouTube on Monday. Is that is that so? When we're famous? Yeah. <laughs> Not quite famous yet, but oh. maybe in a couple of weeks. He just took one look at them and goes, yeah, we got them. That would be £92.16, including the bat. For four, that is. Oh, what about so. cash? Oh, yeah, cash is fine, yeah. Oh, we don't do any difference for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, that's good. I'll so take them. The so what, <laughs> you've got to get these in, have you? We'll have to get those in for you, yeah, no problem. Lovely, thanks, mate. And well, that was all right. 100 quid for four bearings. Fair enough. 100 pound for four, that's not bad at all. I think it's about right. Yep. I've got a couple of days' wait on them because they've probably got to be made in by a six-year-old child. <laughs> Nothing cheap about old cars still. The frames are cheap, but the engines. So I need to come up with something. So we're going to go over in the in the woods in a minute, and we're going to. Seb's brought. Seriously, thing, Seb. Awesome. Now, this is a luggage. Accurate scales. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a luggage way, but it goes up quite a way apparently. So we're going to pop over there in a minute and we're going to weigh the chassis and we're going to weigh the front axle and weigh the back axle. Yeah. So what do you reckon the chassis weighs then? <laughs> it's got to be 30 kilos. 30 it's kilos? Got to be. I reckon it's 40, 40 something, 40. What do you reckon it is? All right, so how are we going to pick that up? Do you reckon? Can't see it. Where is it? Hold my on. 33.34. 34. 34.5. 35 kilos. Oh, blimey. That's not very heavy, is it? It's a twat to lift, though. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go to the garage. What do you reckon on the wheel, Bri? Ah, uh, uh, 15. Not far. 15, these are the rear wheels. Pretty. 
call that 18, isn't it, really? Yeah, 18. 18 kilos. Not bad at all, that. What do you reckon, 15 and a half? 15, yeah, 15, 5, 6. 15 and a half. Ready? Yeah. Out. That's the obvious bit. 41. Yeah, 41.3. Three. Oh. We'll weigh this and then weigh the hubs and that separately. Yeah. 17. 17 and a half. Yeah. Right, so this is the hub. And take the bucket off. About a bucket nine. Right, fuel tank. 7.8. Let's call it eight, eight yeah. kilos. Put this in there as well just to help. 20 kilos of nonsense. 5.2. Five, 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 yeah. Better have in it as well. 8.2 What do you reckon it's going to be fully? Mm. What do you reckon? I want 350 all in. I think 300. Oils and water, all radiator. Yeah. Radiator is going to be... 320 all the fluids. 320 you reckon? 320 all in. Well we shall see. If I got 55 horsepower I say, because it's going to be something like that. 50, 55 horsepower. A third of a tonne times three. That's 110, 165 brake horsepower a ton. That's got to be some decent car, isn't it? It's got to be dangerous, I think. I think it will be dangerous with the old rod <laughs> brakes. But there you go. That's about the size of that. Cheers, Seb. No worries, mate. All right, you might have thought it was a bit weird that I've just weighed all of that when I can just go and weigh the car as a whole. But why I actually did it, is to give you a bit of a clue. The competition to get these free CDs is going to be how much does the rat weigh complete? To give you a bit of an idea, I'm weighing everything, but I haven't weighed the engine yet because it's not complete and I haven't weighed a couple of the other bits. So you're going to have to make sure you tune in next week, make a note of what we've weighed so far. This isn't a free giveaway, you've got to work for this one. Wait for next week and then tot up and then leave me an answer. So I bought the old frame back because I've got a few more holes to drill down there and I bought another roll sort of set. I think I need one in there. Both these are screaming for holes. And I started this one a long time ago, didn't I? So I'm gonna put one there and one there. The rust is starting to kick in. Looks pretty cool. What this is doing is adding a uniform texture to it all. That's my idea. All that best to have a couple of holes in as well. I've got to do a little bit of welding here as well because I'm gonna box this up because belt and braces. Well, it's the Queen's Jubilee or something this weekend. I think the Queen's about 150 now and she's ruled for about 200 years. So we better make it look a bit a bit coronation-y around here, aren't we? God save the Queen She ain't no human being Right, I've done my bit. That's enough of that nonsense. Let's get on with this. So I've got a Bosch set. Bosch. Do you reckon these are Bosch or they're just, you know? Come well, on, let's do it. Then done. And we've got to be done now as welded up.
So these aren't purely cosmetic. This is for airflow, so you got a direct drive in and out. I'm thinking about putting some sort of, like the old Nortons and Triumphs used to have some sort of scoop in there, but I don't know. But I need this sort of ventilation for the, for the rapid braking I'm gonna need with this third of a ton monster. Glasses, look, look at the state of that. How the hell did I get that wrong? So I've got to get rid of that hole and drill another one. So I'm going to use this bit of copper, clamp in behind, and then weld up the front. that's about it for this week lads I'm afraid thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video if you're not subscribed at this point maybe it's a good time to hit the old subscribe button if you want to use the tip jar and help out with the channel that would be greatly appreciated anyway leave me a comment a like and I'll catch you dudes next week hang loose